Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 23 playthrough of the Pittsburgh Pirates. We are about to begin the 2048 preseason, about a month out from spring training. It has been a very quiet offseason for the Pirates. Um, we have not signed a free agent yet. Did recently make one trade, um, reuniting with our former closer, Ricky Rios, who we moved on from when he was uh, arbitration eligible before last year and set to make very big money. Uh, the Cubs had him signed. We have gotten them to keep his contract. Had to give up. Um, he's in the final year of his contract with them. We got them to keep the contract. Had to give up one solid, I'd say a B prospect. And I don't need to be particularly mysterious about this. I can go to his history page and let you know exactly what we did. Um, four kind of non-prospects, just organizational filler with good personalities that they liked. And then third baseman Alex Sanabria is kind of the B-level prospect. Um, could have pretty good home run power and be a decent hitter. Doesn't have a lot of speed, um, not great defensively except for his arm. He's going to strike out a lot. Um, is durable and has a decent personality. Um, so not an A-level prospect by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but to bolster our bullpen with Rios, who although he uh, was not great with the Cubs last year, had been a very successful closer for us um, most of the time he was with us. Happy to have him back. Um, so I think that's a potentially good addition. Other than that, though, we really have not done much this off season, And we did have money to spend. Um, I've been going back and forth um, in the comments on some previous episodes with uh, frequent commenter Patrick DeBonis. Um, who brought up the good point that um, when I put $24 million into my draft budget for this upcoming season um, to potentially give us the opportunity to overpay for a guy in the second or third round that has kind of insane contract demands and maybe bring a little more talent into our now depleted minor league system, he made the point that um, you know you could put this number down to $5 million dollars and then you've still got a lot more money in your budget for potential free agents and taking on contracts um, and that you can normally still spend this money that's available to overpay um, players when you get to the draft. And that is a great point. And I think 99% of that time, that's accurate. And it may be 100% of the, the time. I do remember, and I don't even know whether it was this version of OOTP or maybe a previous version, when I kind of did that and I had a penny-pinching owner like I do now with Robert Nutting, and he was so cheap that because that money was not specifically designed for the draft budget, even though I had a lot of money for free agents in June, uh, July and August when I was trying to sign those players, um, they wouldn't let me do it. I think it may be, I guess it's, I don't know if it's a feature or a bug. I think you could argue it perhaps either way. Um, but I'm pretty sure that that did happen to me in the past with a penny pinching owner, which is why I want to explicitly make sure that the draft budget is really big this year since I didn't love any of the free agents who were available. But totally recognize that that is cutting back my flexibility and think that Patrick's point, like I said, is either right 99% of the time or 100% of the time. Um, I feel like it hasn't always worked for me when I've had an owner who is a little greedier, like Robert Nutting. Uh, but if others of you have experienced this and can share your thoughts um, below down in the comments, uh, would definitely appreciate them. And there's still here on January 20th, not a ton of top-level talent left in free agency. Our longtime starter, Bobby Gonzalez, is still out there. Um, given that he's still looking for close to $10 million and he's going to be turning 38 years old shortly, 
going to still try to go with a youngster in the back end of the rotation rather than him. So no real temptation on um, my end to chase after him. And then looking at the players who are free agents, you can see there's only a handful of three-star guys at this point. In the cases of Willie Medrano, Jaquan Hinton, Ramon Herrera, Luis Flores, and Mike Augustini, about half of those guys are players who spent time with us in the past, um, but don't feel the need to, <coughs> excuse me, bring on any of them right now, particularly with the money that most of them are looking for. Um, I'm going to have some competition for probably the final spot or two in our bullpen in spring training, as well as probably the <coughs> final spot or two of our bench players. And I do apologize for hacking in your ears. Um, still have the lingering effects of COVID from a couple of weeks ago that, uh, Hopefully we'll be gone soon, but um, are not. I'm not quite hundred percent yet, but certainly off of the IL. So, um, so I don't think there's still anyone for us to really chase in free agency as we get um, through spring training. Big goal is going to be to keep the team healthy, um, kind of figure out those final roster spots that we've got to make decisions on, and then probably you know add some players to bolster some of our minor league teams where. Um, you know, we haven't completely set up the minors at this point. We do have a lot of players down in rookie ball who we can potentially promote. And we're going to have to kind of clean up the international complex a little bit, which is up to 43 players to uh, give us some room to keep signing international amateur free agents that our scouts find. So um, the other thing I may try to do is see... Um, is there anyone that we can talk extension with on our roster? You know, unfortunately, everyone has a contract for next season at this point. So um, we're not going to be able to take advantage of the big surplus of money that we have that we've been talking about. But if I can um, lock up a player or two, may you know, especially some of our arbitration eligible players, um, may not be the worst thing um, possible. You can see the salary situation even for next year right now is not that bad. So we're going to spend a little time seeing if maybe there's someone who's uh, worth getting locked up for the medium to long term. And there are a couple of um, potentially big time players interesting to talk extension with us. Um, Alex Arroyo, um, the brilliant youngster, 13 and 12 record, 365 ERA for us last year. Fan favorite already with a great personality and certainly looks like he can be a pretty solid front end of the rotation pitcher for us going forward, particularly with the fact that we've moved on from Bobby Gonzalez and Luis Longoria this offseason. Um, He's willing to entertain an extension averaging $14.5 million a year for nine years, um, which would potentially allow us to um, buy out five um, free agency years from him. Um, so he's looking for a lot more money than he's expected to make in arbitration right now. But if he keeps striking out almost 200 batters with a ERA in the mid threes with double digit wins. Um, those arbitration numbers for him are going to climb pretty considerably. So we may try to work out something with him. And um, Danny Kalez, um, who kind of has been a solid prospect for us for several years now, you can see we drafted him in the third round back in 2040. Kind of really broke out last year with 25 homers and 336 at-bats. He's a left-hand hitter, um, definitely a um, better-than-average major league hitter. Um, kind of a guy that, in a perfect world, we'd prefer to just be playing against righties and hopefully have someone else against lefties to be in the lineup, um, particularly because he's not all that great defensively. Um, 
but he's willing to talk extension also. He wants close to $9 million a year, which I think is a little bit high. Um, but again, this is a guy who um, we've got the opportunity to buy out several of his free agency years. So may make offers to one or both of those players and see if maybe we can get something done that's um, palatable for the Pirates and our budgetary constraints and allows us to um, lock up a pretty good left-handed hitter and a potentially um, excellent starting pitcher for the, the medium to long term. And looking at what Alex Arroyo is looking for, um, I don't know that we're going to be able to get to an agreement. Um, we've got him under control for four more years. He wants to opt out after a third season, even before he's through arbitration. And his contracts, um, you know, starting next year, he would still be a minimum 700,000 player next year. And his arbitration numbers are about 3 million, 4 million, and then maybe 5 million. Um, so he's looking for us to really overpay him compared to where we think he's going to be for these next few years. Now, granted, as I mentioned, outside of the 700,000 a year from now, um, I do think that those numbers in his fourth, fifth, and sixth years are likely to climb towards these numbers. But then uh, $19 million on the back end is um, probably a bargain a little bit if um, he really is a front end of the rotation type of pitcher like we think he can be. But it's definitely not a huge bargain, particularly when you think that this contract's taken him through his mid-30s. Um, so I'm going to try to work something out, but we're going to be taking out the player opt-out that he's looking for and uh, definitely not offering him as much money as he's looking for. So not necessarily optimistic that we're going to be able to come up with something that meets his goals of uh, nine years at a $14.5 million average um, simply because we've got him for so cheap these next four years. Um, at some point, um, even though you'd love to get a big time player signed for the long term with a team like the Pirates. Um, I think sometimes it's probably just best to let them play through their arbitration years and then let them go when they're making really big money like we did with Longoria this past off season. All right, so we'll see what happens with Arroyo here. He's looking for nine years, 14 and a half million a year, wants an opt out after year three when he wouldn't even be free agent eligible yet, and then also wanted a player option for the final season. Uh, we've changed things to a nine-year, still a nine-year deal, um, no opt-out after year three, and it's a team option for the big number in his final season. That puts it at an average of $12 million for the nine years, so about $2.5 million less than he's looking for with optionality that's more favorable to the team. Um, we'll see what he thinks. Oh, we do have to put a buyout on the team option, which is in there now. He's willing to do a shorter deal with a number closer to the 12 million that we were thinking about. Again, these first four years are arbitration eligible seasons. So, um, you know, he's not going to be making anywhere near this. He's going to be making the minimum in 2049 still if we don't sign him. Um, but maybe we can find some middle ground, a little bit higher number. Um, I'd like more than six years. Um, would like to maybe get at least three of his free agency years bought out, especially till the age of 32. Um, looks like the player option in the final year is a big thing for him, um, which I get. But... Um, Dollar-wise, we're not that far off at this point. But again, um, he's looking for six years with that average rather than nine, which is clearly more beneficial for us potentially. All right, I don't know, I don't know whether he'll go for this or not. <laughs> As I mentioned, he was looking six years, 12.3, with a player option for the final season. We're coming back with seven years at 11.6 with a team option for the final year. 
And his number is coming down, um, but he's really set on the player option and really set on six years. Um, you know, if we can get two free agent years out of him, it's not the worst thing in the world, especially because he'll be 32 by the time we're moving on from him. So maybe we can get something done here. All right, we'll see what happens. We're trying to find some middle ground. He was looking for six years, uh, 12 million a year with a player option in the sixth season. We are going to finally give him the player option, but we're going to make it in the seventh season. Um, so at least we've got six years after this one where we know we're going to have him. And we're at 11.8 million, so we're not that far off in terms of the money. Um, and we've given him the player option now. I think there's a chance he'll go for this. Nope. <laughs> he really wants that six years, and now he wants more money. Um, hmm. I think we're going to back off with Arroyo for the time being. As I mentioned, we've got him 700000 this year, 700000 next year. And then the three years after that, I do expect that his numbers are going to be much higher um, in arbitration when he's arbitration eligible. But the fact that he wants a six-year deal with an um, opt-out in the final year essentially means that, you know, the fifth year is the only year of his free agency that we're buying out with this deal and then he's got the optionality to leave us in 2054. Um, so for a guy that we're going to have at the major league minimum the next two years, um, certainly this year, and then obviously next year if we don't sign him to an extension, I um, feel like his price is probably going to go up, particularly in those arbitration years. But only getting one year of free agency bought out with him just doesn't excite me that much. And Danny Calais looking for $8.8 .8 million a year over eight years. Um, I don't know that I want to make that long of a commitment, and I certainly don't want to be paying him that much money. Um, he's a good bat. He's a better-than-average major league hitter. Um, relatively small sample size at this point, only 501 at-bats. Um, but he has put up a 148 OPS plus and a 143 WRC plus with 37 homers and 111 ribbies in those 501 at-bats. So he definitely can uh, be a very productive offensive player at the major league level. Um, the weaknesses, as we talked about, not great defensively, not a ton of speed, and um, he's really a guy in a perfect world that you'd love to um, not be playing against left-handed pitching. Um, and he's also a guy who, um, you know, we've got this year for the major league minimum and next year for the major league minimum before he gets into those arbitration years. So um, if we could buy out a free agent year or two at a lower average dollar figure than he's looking for, something to think about. Um, we'll give it a try. It may end up being a similar situation to what we just ran into with Alex Arroyo, though. And I don't think we'll get a deal done with Kalez. As I mentioned, he was looking for eight years, 8.8 .8 million a year. We're coming back with eight years, which surprises me a little bit, but only an average of 6.8 million a year and a team option in the final year when he's making the most money. Um, so really a seven year contract, most likely at, you know, probably about six and a half million a year when we get away from that big final season. So um, I don't think he'll go for this. Um, but we'll see what he thinks. No, um, he has taken his dollar amount down a lot, uh, but now he's looking for a five-year deal, which again is only going to give us um, one year of free agency control. So maybe we can meet in the middle, but I think that um, it's probably going to end more similar to how we finished up with Arroyo. And he wanted five years at seven point one million. Uh, we're coming back with six years at almost six point seven million. Um, so maybe there's a chance. Um, it didn't put the last year as a team option anymore, so it's a true six-year contract. Um, 
No, he's willing to come down in the money, but he really only wants those five years. Um, again, that's only given us one year of free agency with him, which is not optimal. All right, I really want to get the sixth year. Um, he was looking for 6.984 over five years. We're at 6.833 over six years. So the dollars are, we're getting pretty close at this point. I had to think if he doesn't go for this, um, probably time to move on. Yeah, he wants more money in only five years. So similar situation to Arroyo where um, if we're only getting to buy out one year of free agency, and we're way overpaying compared to what the arbitration expectations are for the next four or five years. Um, I just feel like we're taking on too much injury risk, too much risk that they underperform or regress in, in not really getting enough bang for the buck. If we could get a couple free agent seasons locked up out of either of those guys, um, maybe we'll reconsider doing something down the line. But um, right now, I think it's probably time to move on. And I am absolutely floored. Um, cheapskate, penny pinching, Robert Nutting has just um, increased our budget by six million dollars. Um, as we get here closer to the start of the season, um, so you can see we're up to about twelve million dollars for free agents now. Um, if we wanted to get a little more aggressive in terms of our draft, we could do that. Um, I may actually throw another million dollars in there. Um, and I may actually tweak scouting and development up to as high as we've ever had them. I don't know that I'll be able to maintain these amounts going forward, but going to put um, half of the six million into scouting development in the draft and the other half of the six million he gave us into additional money to be taken on contracts as things move along. Um, so he had moved us from 164 to 174 after we made the World Series. And because uh, we haven't spent a ton of his money this offseason, apparently, um, he gave us another $6 million. I don't ever recall that happening um, with a penny pinching owner in the past that I can agree, that I can remember. Um, and it's been pretty rare for a boost from anybody. Um, following the one-time boost you could potentially get um, right when the off-season begins. So um, nice surprise. We'll see if hopefully when we get into the season we can uh, use that money to remain uh, competitive and hopefully get this team back into the series. And we're getting close to the start of spring training. Um, just kind of been re-scouting everyone in our organization for the past few weeks seeing uh, if anyone has kind of changed as far as their talent and abilities and potential. Um, going to take a quick look in at the free agents. Uh, kind of interesting, Bobby Gonzalez, um, although the market for him has not been robust, um, the demand is up to $14 million a year. Um, so he uh, has been a very reasonably priced starter for us over the course of his career, um, but definitely won't be back. Um, Taking a look at the batters, a um, few of the top-ish players still out there, um, but don't think that there's any real difference makers. You know, we're going to start getting to the point where if we can sign some decent players to a minor league contract, um, we'll certainly think about that. But um, feel like the money that we do have set aside in the budget at this point um, is probably going to be best used to take on some salary as we get closer to the trade deadline during the season and maybe identify if there's a, a weakness or two that we need to shore up. And we did find one player, our former catcher Nelson Ibarra, who we traded to the Cubs um, for our new starting catcher, Andres Coronel, uh, last year. Um, is a free agent now. Love his defensive ability. He's not really much of a major league hitter at this point. Um, but he does look like there's a chance that he may sign a minor league contract, so we'll certainly throw a minor league contract out to him. Um, if he comes back and says he wants a major league contract, wouldn't do that. But if we can uh, bring him on board for some organization, organizational depth, uh, would certainly be fine doing that. 
and we're to the start of spring training. I'm going to have 19 pitchers in camp, um, so hopefully won't overwork anyone too much. Um, I think the top four in our rotation is pretty well set with Street, Arroyo, Devin Smith, and Sal Valadez. Uh, right now we're looking at Juan Bin Daoud and Mike Wright as our fifth and sixth starters when we move to the conservative six-man rotation for the spring. So um, see how that battle goes for who potentially could become our fifth starter. Uh, Ricky Rios, at least for the time being, is the closer. Um, Greg Gaylord and Bobby Astorga is setup men. And then a lot of guys in middle relief and long relief um, fighting for roster spots. And we've got 25 everyday players in camp. Uh, you can see four catchers, a um, ton of infielders, decent amount of outfielders. Um, you know, not a ton of competition, but certainly um, for the final couple roster spots, um, probably a little more wide open than it's typically been with our team since we haven't had an extremely um, active offseason in terms of adding a lot of uh, major league talent. Just kind of had our first, and I don't even want to say it's a major injury, but first annoying injury of spring. Um, veteran, former starting shortstop, now kind of a utility infielder for us, Luis Linares. Um, going to be out with a strained rib cage muscle. Going to have a minimal impact on his hitting and running for a couple of weeks, given that he's wrecked physically and 34 years old, though, who are just going to put him on the 10-day IL to be... Um, as careful as possible. Certainly not a huge loss, but um, may not have him um, ready when we begin the season in about two weeks. Definitely going to be borderline whether he'll begin the year on the IL or not. And it's now March 16th, uh, getting close to the end of spring training. 11-10 uh, and 10 record for the Pirates. Um, most importantly, haven't had any other uh, injuries since the minor bang-up we mentioned with Luis Linares. Um, Itri Kasulu has been um, recovering from a torn UCL, but that is not an injury that um, he suffered in spring training. He's probably going to end up starting the year in AAA anyways. Um, so we've got about a week left of games at this point, uh, taking a look at the schedule, and... Um, Actually, only five games left. Um, we've got about a week and a half till the season starts on the 26th. So hopefully uh, we can remain healthy over these last five games and then figure out what the 26-man roster is going to look like as we get ready for the start of the 2048 season. And we've been signing a couple random um, players to minor league free agent contracts over the past few weeks. Um... Don't see anyone that we really need to chase as far as position players at this point. Um, Bobby Gonzalez is still out there. Um, I think he's going to be, given that he's looking for $12 million, extremely offended. We may not even be able to make him an offer as a minor league, or we can make him a minor league offer. I think he's going to be offended by that. But it's March 20th, and he hasn't found a job yet. Um, We'll try to bring him back with a minor league deal. Again, I don't think he'll accept it, but um, at this point it can't hurt to give it a try. And not surprisingly, Bobby Gonzalez does want a major league contract. Um, you can see we've made offers to several other um, players also. Um, would have been a perfect situation for us if we could have gotten him back, but... Um, He's still looking for, like I said, $12 million a year. So clearly a minor league deal was not going to work on his end. Um, I don't think a major league deal works on our end at this point. So good luck, Bobby. And we've made it through spring training. Um, Linares still banged up. May spend the first day or two of the season on the I.L., um, other than that, though, everyone is relatively healthy. Um, we'll send Kitsulu down to double-A for the time being. Oh, they want us to put him on the IL. Fine, we will put him on the IL. 
ultimately he will be sent down to the minors most likely when the season begins so now we begin uh making the cuts to get 43 players down to 26. And while it's not a cut, the first decision we have to make is who our fifth starter is going to be. Um, top two guys, Sean Street and Alex Arroyo, were both great in the spring. The youngster, Devin Smith, certainly looks ready. Sal Valadez, although he was 0-2 with a 486 ERA, was always going to be our number four starter. Comes down to the righty Juan Bin Daoud and the lefty Mike Wright. Uh, Bin Daoud is a guy we picked in the third round um, back in our first draft in 2038. Um, thought he could develop into a starter. He never really developed that third pitch, though. So he has been pretty effective for us out of the pen the last couple years. Mike Wright, you may remember, is a uh, veteran pitcher for our team who has spent most of his time in the bullpen with us and also been very effective. We did bring him back on a $7 million contract this year. Um, felt like we needed a left-hander. Um, it was his final arbitration eligible year. And um, felt like we were overpaying a little bit, but did think that he could eventually possibly end up in that fifth starter role for us. He has pitched better than Bin Daoud throughout the spring, given that Wright would give us a second lefty in the pen. And he also does at least have a third pitch that's major league quality with that cutter. Um, I think we're going to go with Wright in the five spot um, for the time being. So we are going to um, force Mr. Bin Daoud into a reliever role and then ask our manager for a five-man rotation and mike wright is in there so street arroyo smith valadez and Wright, two lefties and three righties are going to be our five-man rotation coming out of spring training so some differences there street arroyo and valadez were in the rotation last year uh, the youngster, Devin Smith, who was really good when we brought him up in a bullpen role, now gets a chance to start with Luis Longoria and Bobby Gonzalez gone. And that also, at least at the start of the year, gives an opportunity for the 30-year-old Mike Wright to um, start some games. You can see he started uh, eight games over three seasons when he first came up with Detroit. Um, has started only one game for us since we picked him up. And I did also notice that it's uh, Mike Wright's 30th birthday. So congratulations, Mike. You're a uh, major league starting pitcher as the season begins. So with Kitsui on the IL, we've got 18 pitchers, need to shrink it to 12, possibly 13, but most likely 12. Uh, so going to spend a little time figuring out who's going to actually make the roster. And we've got the pitching staff down to 14 players um, relatively easily, but still have one or two cuts ahead of us. Um, kind of the issue, we know that Rios is going to be our closer. Gaylord and Astorga, key roles out of the bullpen. Bin Daoud's going to make the team. Um, after that, we've kind of got Mike Ceballos and Chris Colvin, who are both youngsters, um, along with the lefties, Willie Arenales, Danny Robles, and the young right-hander, Alfredo Servine, kind of have five guys for three spots with those players. And as you can see, um, with right in street in the rotation, um, only two potential lefties in the bullpen, and they're both on the bubble. So that could end up working against the right-handers since we probably are going to ultimately want at least two lefties out of the pen. Um, but we will defer on that decision for a few minutes as we focus on the uh, everyday players right now. It's been relatively easy to get the uh, position players down to 18, but obviously we've got to get it to 14 or 13, so we have a little more work to do. Uh, Edgar Velasquez, who we picked up <laughs> in the Rule 5 draft, thought it was a... Um, long shot for him to make the team do like his defensive versatility 
uh, but he's a guy who hit 279 in A ball last year, still has a lot of work to do to really be a big time major league player. So we're going to see if um, maybe we can get something in terms of a prospect for him. If not, we'll just uh, ship him back. And it looks like for Velasquez, uh, we can get Emmanuel Dominguez um, reliever in his last option year. Um, he is a replacement level major league player, um, but he's got a great personality, um, so not the worst guy to stash in AAA. Um, so we're going to go ahead and um, rather than just uh, dump Velasquez, um, looks like... Um, the Nationals are willing to guarantee a roster spot to him, so we'll uh, make the trade for Emmanuel Dominguez. And you know we're always looking for every little advantage we can get. We could also get the uh, Nats to throw in several hundred thousand dollars um, in addition, so we're going to go ahead and complete that trade. And one of the minor leaguers that we had in camp is Jorge LeBron. Uh, you may remember that name if you've been a frequent um, watcher of the series, uh, a guy that we had in Kansas City back when we were running that team. And we did have him for part of a year here with the Pirates as well. Um, I don't mind him as organizational depth down in AAA. Um, not anything special as far as his personality. Uh, but still a guy who could be a respectable fifth outfielder. Um, fortunately for us, we've got enough depth that um, we can send him down to AAA. And I'd mentioned that I um, wasn't 100% sure what this roster would look like. And one example of that is Jaden Godfrey. Um, when I started planning for this season, I thought he would make the team as a utility player, um, hit 290 down in AAA last year, um, and he's already 25 years old, so he doesn't really have too much left to prove there. Um, we're trying to turn him into a more useful utility player, though. Right now he can play left, center, and right fine. Still got a little work to do at third and a lot of work to do at first base. So um, given that, oh, he's actually out of option years. I thought I had an option year with him. Um, cancel that I may end up keeping him up um, or I may I'm gonna try to sneak him down he's not a huge time player um, he's not a big time player at this point um, and I would rather um, get him a little more versatile defensively um, down in AAA if at all possible before we bring him up And I am actually probably going to pull an audible on what I was just talking about. Um, we also have Jer Jerry Drake on the team, who's actually a somewhat similar player to what we think Godfrey's going to be. Pretty versatile defensively, not a ton of power. 24-year-old um, who hit 288 for us in AAA last year. Also still kind of learning to play some of his positions. But Drake does have option years left. Um, so we're going to demote him to AAA, and we are actually going to um, remove Godfrey from waivers. Oh, I guess he's got to... I uh, thought we had a chance to get him back. All right, well, we'll figure that out over the next couple of days. Um, but we've kind of got our roster at this point. Um, would like to get Godfrey back on the team. May have been a little impetuous there with my uh, sending him down to AAA when I hadn't really thought things through, but it is what it is. And I have decided that we are going to keep 14 position players. Um, so Coronel, backed up by Rodriguez, are our catchers again. Uh, for the time being, Drake and Green are utility infielders. Uh, Lupe Zelay at first. Julio Castillo at second, Jerry Rivera, the rookie at third, and Juan Castillo at short. Uh, Mario De Leon uh, makes the team, a uh, guy that we picked up in that trade with Toronto um, back at the end of October when we decided that it was time for us to 
move on from uh, former number one overall pick Henry Gonzalez. Um, we got um, him in return in that trade. Um, not sure how long he's going to be with us. Um, he could lose his spot when um, Luis Linares is ready to come back. Um, but as I mentioned, we do have options with Drake. Um, so from that perspective, when Linares is ready to come back, uh, maybe Drake goes down. Uh, infield, or so the infield is set. Um, Zelaya, Castillo, Rivera, and Castillo, as I mentioned. And then the outfield, um, no real surprises there. Um, we've got uh, Alex Racho in right. Danny Kales most likely will be playing in left or DH. Arturo Arellano in center. Uh, Yoshitaro Nakahara uh, going to be a left fielder and or DH. And then Joel Fields, um, who has proven everything he possibly needs to prove in AAA, hitting 346 last there last year with 28 homers and 350 at bats, um, going to get a chance to be a fourth or fifth outfielder for us this year. So, um, as I mentioned, um, we will see what happens with um, Godfrey. Hopefully, I didn't get too cute with him. Um, if nobody picks him up. Um, he could come back to the roster um, shortly, although honestly, if he does make it through at this point, um, we probably will keep him down in AAA, get him a little more versatile over the next couple of months, and then likely have him back um, in the majors, hopefully for good when we have some injuries. Not that I'm hoping for injuries. And then other than that, as I mentioned, um, Linares is going to hopefully be back um, pretty soon. And um, when Linares comes back, that will give us a decision to make with Drake and or De Leon, most likely. So that brings us back to the pitching staff. Um, in getting 14 players down to uh, 12, uh, you can see for the most part we've got players with really good stamina. And uh, quite honestly, the two guys that don't have tons of stamina, Colvin and Ceballos, are, are both on the bubble right now and definitely will not both make the team because we are going to keep the two lefties. Um, Danny Robles, who has been a pretty solid lefty out of the bullpen for us uh, for the last several seasons, is back. And then Willie Aranales, um, who had been with us before, is a guy that we picked up in that trade that I was just talking about for Henry Gonzalez from the Blue Jays, another piece that we got back in return. Thought he might have a chance to make the team. And he's also a guy who's more effective against lefties than he is against righties. Um, feel like we want at least two lefties um, coming out of the pen to go with the two lefties we're going to have in the rotation. So that means um, that we're kind of down to Ceballos, Chris Colvin, and Alfredo Servine. And likely only two of them are going to make the major league roster. Or only one of them, sorry, is going to make the major league roster. So taking a look at those three right-handed relievers, they're also the three youngest guys um, we're talking about. Chris Colvin, a uh, guy who we picked in the sixth round back in 2046. Extremely effective in AAA the last two years with a 120 and a 112 ERA and put up a 390 ERA for Pittsburgh last year in 32 and a third innings pitched. The youngest of the crew, um, not even 23 years old yet ground ball pitcher who throws in the high 90s plus stuff plus movement average control and a four pitch repertoire although two of those pitches aren't great for a reliever um, so he is in the mix mike ceballos uh 23 year old um eighth round pick back in 2042 put up a 241 era and triple a for us last year Good personality, um, plus stuff, average movement and control. Two really nice pitches with a good fastball and a good sinker. Um, he is in the mix. And last but not least is Alfredo Servin. Um, weakest stuff of the group, best movement, uh, average control. A uh, guy who could potentially be a fifth starter in a pinch for us. Put up a 320 ERA in 31 starts for AAA for us last year. Um, he's only throws in the low 90s. Um, Servine has got one option here left. I don't think there's any issues there. Ceballos, 
two option years left. And Chris Colvin, two option years left. Um, so no issues there with any of them. I think that Colvin is the best. He's also the only one who's proven himself to some extent at the major league level. So we're going to give Colvin the opportunity, um, send Ceballos down to AAA and Servine back down to AAA. Uh, clearly both of those guys would be in the mix to um, join the major league staff if we have any injuries, which I'm sure we will at one point. Um, but that gives us um, a 12-man pitching staff again, which is, you know, given that Colvin does not have incredible stamina, is something that maybe will change going forward but you can see other than Cole and uh, we've got a ton of guys I and mean, basically everyone else has the stamina to start now not all of them have the pitches to be starters and the stuff to be great starters but um still have a lot of stamina in our bullpen so i think we can hopefully manage through a 12-man pitching staff with just one guy with low stamina And with that, we've got our spring training roster down to the 26 uh, men that we are likely to bring uh, north with us to Pittsburgh. Obviously, we will find out what goes on with Jade and Godfrey. We'll have some decisions to make when Linares is healthy. Um, and we're going to continue working on uh, figuring out what all of these minor league teams should look like over the next few days before the start of the season three days from now. So um, in our next episode, we will uh, be back for the first pitch of the 2048 season, find out whether or not we screwed up uh, putting Godfrey through waivers and DFA or not. And also um, when we do um, get to opening day, run the preseason predictions and see what the expectation should be for this Pirates team. My expectation is once again, uh, playoffs are bust and hopefully a long run once we're in the playoffs. But we will see what the prognosticators think in our next episode. Until then, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.